Welcome back to the Zero Pages. Um, this is going to be a quick supplemental video to episode one. Um, I just wanted to cover how to install and run CC65 on macOS. So um, it's a little bit different because you have to download and um, compile the source code for yourself. So if you go to the CC65 homepage and click on Getting Started, you can see there are instructions here on how to get the source. So I'm going to open the terminal, which is uh, the Mac OS equivalent of the Windows command prompt. I'm going to right click, say copy, and paste this. And now you'll see when I run this, it's going to prompt me that there are no developer tools installed on the system. Uh, if you've never installed Xcode or any of the developer tools for uh, Mac OS, it's going to prompt you. So I'm going to click on install. And I'm going to agree to the command line tools license agreement. And uh, then I'm going to wait. It takes quite a while to install. And uh, we just need to let that finish. And then we will go through the process of getting the source code and building CC65. Okay, once that's done, we're gonna click done. And then uh, actually I wanna be in a different folder here. So I'm gonna type MKDIR uh, development because I like to do my development in a development folder on Mac OS. So now that I've created that, I CD into development to change that directory. And then I'm gonna rerun that command that we initially ran. And that is going to download the source code for CC65. This should be relatively quick. Once that's done, you CD into CC65 and type make. And this will begin the process of building CC65 for you. Okay. Now that that's done, we want to, just like we did on Windows, make the commands to run CC65, uh, more specifically CA65 and LD65 from anywhere in the terminal. And to do that, they made a shortcut available in the make script, um, but we have to run it running the sudo command. So we type sudo make avail. And all sudo does is, if you're not aware, um, it elevates your security level uh, when you're running a command temporarily so that you can access protected system folders and stuff like that. So what this is doing is this is making uh, symbolic links to these executables that we just made for CC65 and putting them into system folders so that we can find them anywhere that we need to when we want to run this. So I'm going to hit enter and it's going to prompt for my system password so that I can give the command permission and it's done. And now if I type CC65 dash dash help, we see the same output as before. So I'm gonna expand this a little bit so we can see some more. So that's great. So now what I wanna do is I want to try to uh, assemble this code for blink test that we did in the Windows version uh, in the same way that uh, we did on Windows, but here on the Mac. So I'm gonna go back to my home directory, which is the tilde. And I'm going to type desktop, so I change that to that directory, and I'm going to type ca65 uh, blink test.asm dash o blink test dot o dash t n e s, and then once that's done, I type ld65 again blink test dot o, and then dot o blink test dot n e s type n e s. And now we have a binary it appeared here on this part of the screen. Now we need to run this. So FCEUX for Windows uh, is a very complete emulator and it works really well. Uh, on Mac OS, not so much. It, it works, but it doesn't have any of the really advanced tools that you're gonna need when you're making an NES game. Like it doesn't have the hex editor or the debugger uh, and we definitely need that. So what I usually do on Mac OS is I run an emulator called Nintaco. So if I open the Nintaco folder here, you can see there's a jar file and that jar file is 
the actual emulator. It's written in Java. So the jar file is essentially the executable, just like fceux.exe is executable on Windows. Um, so if I double click this, what's gonna happen is if you don't have Java installed, oh, well, first it's gonna give me a security warning. So I'm gonna go to my security settings and I'm gonna allow this to be run. I'm gonna say open anyway. And I'm gonna say, okay. And now it's saying, in order to run this, you need JDK. All right, let's go get the JDK. If you wanna run Nintaco on Windows, you have to do the same thing. You have to download the JDK in order to launch it. Um, it works really well on Windows too. So if you decide to use that instead of FCEUX, that's no problem. Um, so I clicked that I'm accepting the uh, license agreement, and now I am downloading the Mac OS uh, Java installer. Okay, now I'm going to double click the disk image file to mount it so that I can run the Java installer. Okay, now that that's done, I can close that. And it's gonna ask me if I wanna move the uh, disk image file to the trash. I'm gonna say yes, because I don't need it anymore. And then I'm gonna unmount the JDK disk image. All right, now that that's done, if I double click, double click Nintaco, can see it launched this time. Now, look, if I click on File, Open, and go to my desktop, and double click on the ROM, and it opens it. And just like on Windows, we see the alternating blue and gray. So, hope this was helpful. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated to get installed on Mac OS, but it's not too bad. Um, let me know if you need me to do this for any other operating system. I mean, the process is going to be very similar on operating systems like Linux. So uh, hopefully this is close enough that it uh, helps you out. But anyway, stay tuned for episode two. And uh, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.